Welcome to the ATV Project. You're with your hosts, Steve and Jeff. G'day, mate. How are you, mate? Good. Testosterone. Does <laughs> testosterone cause anger? Oh, it doesn't. I know we've been doing a lot of, um, how dare you say that? I'll fight it. <laughs> um, I think um, we've been doing a bit of a series recently with regards to estrogen and yep. PCOS. And, yep. you know, ov- obviously the two most talked about hormones mm. would, would be um, especially in the fitness, you know, arena would be testosterone, mm-hmm. um, estrogen followed probably closely by insulin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those are the sort of the major governing sort of hormones that affect you know our body. So we're going to have a look at uh, testosterone, yes. and specifically um, the new information that's coming through, Steve. Mm-hmm. Maybe updating some of the uh, the stuff that you thought you know, some mm-hmm. of the, the the myths uh, mm-hmm. of testosterone, specifically. Does testosterone cause anger? Now, we all hear about things like road rage. Mm-hmm. Good opportunity just to, um, if you like, paint a whole 50% of the population. Well, I say 50%. Um, of the bot- 49%. 40, 49, yeah, isn't it? It is because there is slightly a higher chance of, of having being, a female Being a rage. woman and women live longer for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they outlive us a bit too by about four years. So there's more of them around, believe it or not. Yep. That's a good thing. Steve. It's a great I'm thing. I'm not complaining no, about that. No. No. Um, yeah. So, uh, Steve, so the answer to the question, yeah. does testosterone cause anger, yes or no? Well, it depends. This, oh. is, this is the whole tricky thing. So, so if you're low in testosterone yeah. and you take testosterone, which is the most common reason people take it. There's three reasons people take it that, that are in the literature Are you here. talking about synthetic testosterone? Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. So, so this can be done legally or illegally, depending yes. on where you are. We're going to talk so, about both. Okay. Go for it. And we're going to talk about it supplementing in men and women. Yes. And then there's a whole lot of literature. You, you've sort of touched on it before about a lot of women who transition to men who are supplementing with a lot of testosterone and yep. that's being re- reflected in the literature here too. So so there's there's the, the, the two, well, let's just talk about men for the moment. Yep. There's two ways to take testosterone. You can be a healthy male and take testosterone, you know, steroid abuse and yep. all that sort of stuff. Sure. Or you can be low in testosterone like me, old, yep. you know, 52, and supplement with testosterone to a healthy level. Mm-hmm. So the, the most common way people take it is they supplement testosterone to bring their levels back to being a healthy level, like HRT for women. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of the non-natural ways of doing it, mm-hmm. you've got um, uh, testosterone injections and yep. testosterone troches that you yep. can use. Um, you know, and effectively they are a synthetic form of testosterone. Correct, they are. There's short. Uh, acting testosterones like yeah. testosterone suspension, yep. and then there's long acting testosterones where that's be- bound to another carrier, Albumin, which is yeah. like you know an anthate and things like that, yep. which slowly release that Undecanoate. testosterone. Uh, and then right. you've got blends, things like Sustanon uh, 250, which yep. is actually a brand, which is uh, actually a, a blend of. Uh, sipinates and, and, and anthates and other things like that as well too, which try to sort of keep a, a relatively um, a prolonged level of testosterone yeah. in the body. Uh, and and they're, they're used, um, given prescribed by doctors, especially if your levels of testosterone are sure. low for people who have had you know, cancers and other mm-hmm. issues like that, mm-hmm. um, a, a, as well as obviously people off script who are trying to increase uh, and build more muscle tissue. So, sure. you know, however you feel about that. But that's why people might use um, synthetic forms of testosterone. And the cream form is the other way because you can take that in the morning or just rub it on you in the morning because mm-hmm. that's when testosterone normally spikes. So you, yeah. you, you, it's more natural to take that way. Or as you said, the, the depot injections every oh. six weeks. Um, and uh, you just you can measure testosterone. Yeah. So you can just make sure it gets back to like the healthy, youthful level. Yeah. That's that's the plan anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so you can measure it. And so uh, th- this was published in 2018 mm-hmm. or 2017 in, in, in Sexual Medicine Reviews. Mm-hmm. And they yeah, really- your favourite publication, oh, isn't it, Steve? Absolutely. <laughs> he, he pours over that. I mean, like seriously, he's always, oh, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a new sexual medicine room. Uh, yeah, uh, Steve's like, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, look oh, at that molecule. Actually, there is yeah. some pictures here. Well, oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, look ooh. at this picture. How it's sexy like, is that picture? It's like porn for chemists. <laughs> it is. It is porn for chemists. <laughs> and then and the first one is is like, okay, so so assume you're low because you're you know, you're old or you're stressed or you've had testicular cancer and you've had a testing room. Yeah. Replacing testosterone over the last eight decades they've done that and has been highly successful. In this yeah. review, bottom line, it says it's healthy too. Okay. So th- this is good. Now, now, how is it healthy? It boosts muscle mass. So it improves your body composition. Great. 
It reduces waist size, it improves your vascular system. It, it, it decreases what, sorry? Waist size. Oh, waist circumference. Oh, okay. So it helps yeah. you lose body fat. Right. Is that because it, it's it's improving the ratio between estrogen and testosterone? Yes. So, And obviously we want to talk about um, too much of a good thing, Steve, yeah. where, where you're taking it and then you, you go above where you yep. can get DHT, and, mm-hmm. and, and and but we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that because yep. that, that's another thing. So it helps your blood vessels by making more nitric oxide. Yeah. So say you're old and you're impotent, the most common reason is low testosterone, mm. not a Viagra deficiency. Mm. So, yeah, well, <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that's how it's treated. Yeah. So, so you're low in testosterone, you've got no libido, you've got no sex life. The endothelium inside the penis has uh, needs a blood vessel to dilate and testosterone acts on that to make nitric oxide so you get blood circulation to your penis. Yep. So that, that's obviously good. It's good for your bones as well. Yep. It also makes red blood cells. Yeah. So one of the most common causes of anemia in men yep. is low testosterone. That's right. That's yep. interesting. So, so we've had some, um, and also it destroys adipocytes, fat cells. Wow. So, so you've ever seen young men, they eat crap and McDonald's, like I used to, McDonald's all the time. You don't get fat. No, well, part of that, I, I actually thought that most of that, Steve, was to do with um, actually IGF, like growth hormone. Yep. Um, that's obviously part of it, but part testosterone it. as well too. Absolutely, okay, yeah. Cool. Testosterone has a, a, another way of boosting growth, you know, it's picking muscle mass and bone mass and all those sort of things. So testosterone is extremely important for men. Now- Regardless of age. Does, does increase um, the metabolic rate by just improving the amount of muscle tissue which is active? Is that the only way it works? No, the, the other way is it improves insulin sensitivity. Right. So your body's more way. inclined to uh, take any blood sugars and convert them to uh, glycogen yep. and help to store them Yep. Uh, and or utilize them for energy? Absolutely, because right. you make more red blood cells, you you, you make you transport more oxygen around. It's like right. putting a turbo on your car wow. If you if for the mechanics out there. Okay. Now, and, I'm gonna, and, and so the... the yeah, go on, Steve. Oh, okay. Oh, because I'm really interested yeah, to know yeah, what yeah. the optimal level of testosterone is. Oh, we're going to get and, to that. And what I mean by that is like, you know, we always say that things are like a bell curve, right? Mm-hmm. And when you want to be in the apex point. Now, guys that are training and really big, and a lot of people think of steroids and they think immediately of like, you know, Mr. Olympia sort of yeah. stuff. And like those guys are bloody impressive with the physiques. It's not just about taking gear and all of a sudden waking up like that. Obviously, that's a misnomer I think that I most wish. people understand, right? Yeah. Um, and when I was younger, I used to use them, uh, yeah. rightly or wrongly. Um, but there are side effects, yes. and so we're certainly not endorsing that you no. use them, but we understand that a lot of the population does. But what's the APEC point, Steve? Let's say sure. you are a little bit older and you're working with your doctor. You want to feel like that you know, 18 to 20-year-old male, right? That's I mean, exactly that's, the level you want to be at. Yeah, and that's that's good. There's, there's less negative downside. Yeah. But I do want to talk about synthetic versus natural and mm. the differences there as well too. Sure. So a lot to unpack this. Time. I know, I know. The, the optimal level is 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 around about 28, if you want the magic number in Australia. 28. M- yeah, micro, millimoles per litre. Yeah, micromoles. So, yeah, so, millimoles. Yeah, millimoles so, so it's 10 to 32 is the reference range. 10, 10 being on the low side. Low side, yeah. and 32 is the reference range. Right. This is in Australia. Yeah. And you want to be about 28 because that's the average 18 to 20-year-old right. um, testosterone okay. level. And at that age, we're healthy. Tell me then, Steve, through the decades, what yeah. typically what the average happens to testosterone. So, so what did you say, 28? So Yeah, it declines 1% to 2% per annum. So so you go from, from 28 down to 12, so 0.2. So, so in a decade, you'd lose, you'd go from 28 down to 26. Uh, in a decade, you would lose. That's ten years. That's ten percent. Yeah, you'd lose that. You'd yeah. lose. You'd lose about. You'd lose twenty, twenty six, twenty five. Yeah, and, yeah. and notwithstanding, obviously, if everything was considered yeah. to be normal diet, yeah. sleep, um, xenoestrogens, mm-hmm. uh, you know, other things that can have an impact. You can on get fat, and that 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 screws your testosterone. Yeah, because the fat cells turn testosterone into estradiol. Yeah, so there's lots of things. County like if you're healthy yeah. by the age of thirty, you've still got twenty five or twenty six, and and that's good. Yeah, but then forty down in the to low twenties, and it's like okay, yeah. that's all right. Yeah, but you get to fifty, my age, you below twenty, it's like nah, you got to sort of start doing something about it. All right, so so Steve, if that happens, yep. I mean, let's say let's talk about. Well, what do you want to talk about? Because we, I mean, some of the things I want to mention is mm. l- l- let's talk about zinc because zinc yes. has a, a significant impact. Does. And let's talk. I mean, and again, we've 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 spoken before about other herbs, yep, um, aphrodisiac herbs, yep. and and other things like that, which mm-hmm. which are awesome. Yes, uh, and and then also, you know. If people are looking at this, especially older guys, mm-hmm. uh, and also we need to talk about women as well too, yes, it impacts them. Mm-hmm. But what would stop them from going to the doctor 
especially if they're sort of in their you know late forties plus, mm -hmm. why they would go to the doctor and get a troche or an injection. Mm -hmm. Um, and like their Sustanon 250, for example, I think it's like a month. What did you say, six weeks? Oh, no, the, the Undecano 8s are about six weeks. The Sustanon's about four weeks. About four weeks, Because you yeah. get a super physiological. They don't use it much more because you get a, quite a high spike to start with. Yeah. And then it drops away, which is fine. But that high spike, what, what, they're, what they're saying now is you get a lower spike. Yeah. And then you just get it every four weeks so it maintains it at a healthy level. Okay. But the cream is the other way to do it because yeah. it's a prescription. You go to the pharmacy, you pick it up, it's 2% yeah. testosterone, you rub it on yourself every morning, it's simple. Okay. That's But but the injection one, why would it, why would someone do it? Okay, so if they're having androgen deficiency, and let's say you think you've got androgen deficiency, you've got no yeah. libido, yeah. putting on weight, you're depressed, you're anxious, you, you don't, you, you've got no libido, you're impotent, whatever the reason being is, you go to your doctor, you get a blood test, say your testosterone's around 10, mm. 15, it's mm -hmm. low. Mm -hmm. The doctor has, has two options. They do nothing and say, well, you're old, you're 40-something or 50-something, that's normal. Mm. Or they say, no, we want to replace your testosterone to a level that's healthy. Mm. Now, unfortunately, the first one is the most common one because of a paper from 1941. Oh, really? From 19... <laughs> well, look, science is settled, Steve. It does not change. It, it, 1941 was a, was a pivotal year. I've got the paper from 1941. Gosh, come can, on. You, can you believe that? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, you I, could I can. Believe it. Well, you don't make much out of testosterone because it's a non-patentable drug because it's not a synthetic form of testosterone. It is actually a natural form of testosterone they give men. They give women the synthetic forms of progestin, like progestin. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, What's the natural form of testosterone? Well, doctors they, give? they give and you the, a, and the troche. Uh, in in the creams or the injections, it's a natural form of testosterone. It's, it's bioidentical to the hormone in our bioidentical. bodies. Bioidentical, okay. Yeah. So which means what, you can't patent it. Uh, okay. So yes. Okay. Money. Okay. Fine. Fine. But it's it's still synthetic, Steve. It is. Yeah. It's still yeah. synthetic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All drugs are. They they're yeah. made. So so there is a history for the therapy of. Um, prostatic cancer and, and it was it was from nineteen forty one where, where Higgs and Hodge, Hodges, not not Hogan, Hodges. Not Hodges. Yeah, Hodges. That's it. It is. Yeah. yeah. Higgs and Hodges. They they, yeah, yeah. they showed a paper that that when the, a male when they supplemented a male with this new thing called testosterone, yeah. um, one of the people developed prostate cancer out of three. So you, well, that's a very small study. Very Steve. small study. I mean, but the chance that you, you could have had a thousand people, and that yeah. one was one in one thousand. Yep. You just happened to be unlucky, right? Yeah. So, okay, what's the updated data then, Steve? The updated data, which was done by by this guy here, a urologist from America, and he said basically it's completely safe. And so, because so, they would have come away from the study, just yeah. just for reading between the lines yeah. there for people who didn't catch it, and say the chances of developing prostate cancer is one in three. <laughs> it's exactly right, because oh. of course this person. Could Bad waddled science. In, this this person got a bottle in the clinic with a high levels of PSA, but PSA wasn't around then. You PSA stands for what? Oh, Steve? prostatic specific antigen. It's right. a measure of prostatic cancer. Yeah, yeah. And you couldn't measure it. So back then, you just like they, they could have walked in with it, and then um, you know got it, and um, they they could have had it already. And, and look, it is true that if you are predisposed. Uh, Predisposed. Thank you, Steve. I, 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 yeah, it's been a long week. Yeah. Um, is that um, uh, sure? It could accelerate, yeah. obviously, you know, cancers, and that's yeah. something that has been spoken about in yeah. the community as well, too. What's actually worse than testosterone, Steve, is actually growth hormone, which yes. a lot of bodybuilders use. That. If you've got cancer, that's like adding, you know, gasoline on the or petrol on the fire. Absolutely, that, that's Lighter a shocker. Fluid, fluid, actually. Well, growth like. hormone binds with insulin to form insulin-like growth factor one, which is a pro-cancer agent. Yeah. And um, yeah. if you give that to rodents, that's one way you, you can give them cancer. Yeah. If you give them IGF one, which yeah. is found in high amounts in natural foods like cow's milk. <laughs> So <laughs> it is. Steve it's, never misses an opportunity well, to, to bash it's big just, dairy. It's just in there. Take it, take it on, Steve. Now, now IGF one's not bad. I mean, it does cause sure. muscle growth, but yes. you know, we, we put put yourself in the bodybuilder's mind. They're going to try and ramp up IGF one. Of course, they're going to take loads and loads of you know dairy foods or branch chain amino acids or anything that drives up um, IGF one. Yeah, and so so you know you add that with this, but but the other school of thought and, and, and what another problem was is to treat prostatic cancer, they give you a, a blocker of gonadotrophin releasing hormone, which blocks okay. all your hormones. Gonads. So that, yeah, yeah. So it blocks the hormones to almost zero, and that's a treatment for prostatic cancer. They said, well, testosterone must be the cause, mm. but it's not, because what we now know is it's estradiol. 
the bad form of testosterone. Bad form of testosterone. So, so, so estradiol will is because testosterone converts to estrogen, and then estrogen one of the very toxic and active forms of, of estrogen that we like to detoxify yeah. is estradiol. Absolutely. Very, most women know about it, yeah. but for men as well too. And this is actually why um, uh, we recommend detoxifying um, estrogen Correct. for men, specifically when you come off it, because mm. that's when the ratios get out of whack. Yeah. Um, but even when you're on it, Steve, mm. to make the testosterone, whether it's natural or synthetic, more effective mm -hmm. and uh, less side effects, mm -hmm. um, you should be taking something that helps to detoxify estrogen. Absolutely, you should. Yeah. yeah. And we've, we've done a podcast on that, so we can refer back to that. Yeah. So, so you know, taking testosterone now, according to these, you know, these, these sex therapy journals for eight decades, they've studied it, big review. The, the, it's the, you've studied it for eight decades. Eight Steve. decades, That's yeah. Impressive. I've, been, I've been around for eight yeah. decades. Yeah. So, so, you know, it started back, back in, in 1941, of course. Uh, you know, they, they, they didn't know much about it back then, but it was one in three. But as I said, that person could have had it. So they've seen. So what, is, what is the real numbers? Do you know? Do we know? Yeah, it reduces cancers. Get out. Yes. Because, or put it this way, let's say you're a man. I didn't know that. Let's say you're a man. I, okay. Thanks, Steve. There. Let's just, just, say. just pretend. Okay. Just pretend. Now, now as, as, as you know, <laughs> testosterone declines every year. Yep. One, two percent. Yeah, yeah. When are you likely to get more cancer? When you've got loads of testosterone or when uh, you've got very little? Great, great, great question. And, and again, we've spoken about yeah. this before. Obviously, when you're older. Yeah. Um, and that's because it's going down the wrong pathways? It, it goes down the wrong pathways. Also, testosterone is protecting your genome too. So it actually keeps you healthy. It's just that the problem is with testosterone is that there was this scare thing about prostatic cancer, and this turned a lot of doctors off it. Mm. But after eight decades now, again, this, this review talked about it, all this sort of thing, it decreases fat mass, which is a risk for cancer well, as well. Steve, what about um, fluoride? What about aluminium? Yeah, well, they're not good for you. <laughs> but in terms of the impact that it has on testosterone, and because oh, yeah. I heard the other day that 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 um, <sighs> they want to make men less manly, and that mm. there's actually been a, a bit of a uh, campaign, if you like, to introduce a lot of xenoestrogens, rightly or wrongly, by default, what have mm. you. But everything that we drink. Yeah. Everything like sitting under fluoro lights, mm -hmm. um, you know, not getting enough vitamin D. Yep, um, all have a massive impact on the, our levels, our hormones in general, but specifically mm -hmm. for men, testosterone. testosterone. So my understanding is is that the fertility rate is dropping significantly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Since the 1930s, uh, men have become like the average sperm was about a hundred million per day we used to make now we make about 30 million or something like that so strong but i heard 50 percent. but you're you're saying 70 yeah, percent. it's about 70 percent or 50 percent. it's dropped dramatically so so therefore um yeah this has got to have a massive impact oh yeah there's there's artificial lights there's and artificial i know that sperm food. is not the same as testosterone no but yeah but but if you want a healthy sperm you need healthy testosterone yeah the two are linked yeah now, now, when we talk about the ex extra levels, if you take more testosterone, it actually suppresses sperm production. I understand that. So they're using it as a contraceptive overseas in and, a place like Thailand. And that's where, especially if you're still, you know, looking, you're young, you're looking to have yeah. children, yeah. you know, this is where you need to naturally work on increasing your levels of testosterone. Yeah. And a lot of it could be by things that you avoid mm -hmm. um, and or things that you do. And again, yeah. we've spoken about sleep, yep. zinc. Certain herbs that can certainly help with um, testosterone, freeing up bound testosterone is yes. a big one as well too, Steve. That's important, absolutely. Now, now what, what Jeff's talking about there is testosterone, about 98% of testosterone in the body is bound to a thing called sex hormone binding globulin, yep. which makes it inactive basically. Yeah. So there's about 2% that's free and that's what we've got to actually work on, free up in our body. So, you know, there, there are a lot of herbal uh, medicines around that can actually help with healthy testosterone. And I always recommend anybody who is looking to do it naturally yeah. um, that combine that with zinc. I think it's the perfect yeah. combination of, of it products, is. you know. Zinc so. makes it. And, and reduce the crap out of your life, you know. Get yourself more to be, you know, more in nature. Because if you stress yourself out, you're making cortisol, which yeah. is the thing that you don't want because cortisol, when that's getting made, you're not making testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. that terrible pathway. Well, I think there's been a lot. I mean, personally, Steve, the last couple of years have been horrific for me personally yeah. with stress. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people can, can you know, with everything that's happened globally around the world, there's, mm. there's just been so much. Seriously, it's it's like someone's sort of like shaking up the earth and throwing in a bloody 
rattlesnake mm. in there and then just gone deal with it, you know. Yeah. We've got we just got so many people against so many other people groups. We've yeah. got lockdowns. We've got all sorts of fear and, mm. and stuff for that we've got to deal with. It's yep. just it's just been horrendous. It is so horrendous. That's going to have a massive impact on yep. levels of testosterone. Absolutely, it is. Thing. So so look, assume you've got low testosterone for whatever reason. Um, you know, let's say it's the the toxic reasons, or you're just getting old, or something like that. So to address it, we we, we talked about our herbal way, and and the other way is to replace testosterone like you would. And and there, there's been a number of studies, and and figure two, and Matt's going to put this up on the screen for those who are watching. It shows you a placebo controlled trial where the waist circumference dropped over weeks. And you can see up the top there, the placebo group slightly put on weight, but the testosterone group dropped their waist circumference dramatically. Yeah, I mean, wow. you're looking at it now. Yeah. So that's, that's of course, figure two in this paper. Wow. Yeah, and, and I can show Was you- Is that through synthetic means? Steve? Synthetic means, absolutely. Right. And now, of course, what we know, of course, is it's great for reducing glu- glucose levels. So figure three shows the massive reduction in blood sugar levels in the blood just by supplementing with testosterone. Yeah. You know, can you believe that? Okay. I mean, yeah. Is there an optimal level that they recommend- um, you know, you get to when you're supplementing. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're looking, what were these based on? Because, I mean, look, yeah. with regards to testosterone and, and, and everybody's different, for, mm-hmm. for guys that were using it to build muscle tissue, mm-hmm. um, like you heard crazy think going up to 200 milligrams of testosterone, oh, yeah. you know, per I've got per, a paper, 600. Per, per week. Yeah, I've got a 600 milligram per paper in, in, per week. If you want to see that one where they where they got carried away, Steve, I used to use six hundred milligrams per week. Yes, that's what I used to use. Well, and and mate, and I've got to say that yeah. that's not getting carried. And I'm not huh? ad- advising that people no. do this by any stretch of the imagination. No. This is when I was younger and I didn't know as much as what I know now. And yeah. I'm not saying that I'm I'm judging anybody that is because you know that's again you know if you're doing it with your doctor that's legal. That's yeah, of course. Choice. But um, typically they won't recommend six hundred milligrams of testosterone. Yeah. Normally it's 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 how much is it, Steve? What would well, a doctor normally re- if you're using the Troche or if you're using Cream. A, well, a Sustanon 250 is 250 milligrams of testosterone. A month. So you divide that by four. Yeah. What do you, what's, so it's, it's, it's about, it's about five, 60, 60, 60. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what's the natural production? If you were to measure it that way, then what's well, the that's natural? about the, that's about, it's about 10 milligrams a day of testosterone. There you go. So and that's a healthy sort of a healthy, normal level. sort of 20 year old male. Yeah. Is, is, is 10 milligrams? Absolutely. So so the creams, you get a, a 2% and you usually put two grams on. So you supplement with four milligrams of testosterone. Right. Um, so that's the uh, a standard thing and you can go up from there. Mm. So you've got to remember that that's a 40% boost. But your testosterone. body shuts down its own natural production. It does right? a bit and that's why you, you overdo it a bit. Now, it depends on why your natural production has slowed down. So if you're just getting old, your Leydig cells in your testes atrophy. Well, I shouldn't do that, should I? <laughs> <laughs> but for those who are watching, I, I gave it, you know, but basically your testes you shrink. gave a little squeeze. Yes. And, and they just go away. They just, they just atrophy. They so, don't make as much. Um, what happens if you give them a fair flogging, Steve? I mean, what happens if you're using them regularly? Flog them. Um, um, using yeah. them. Yeah. Does, does they still atrophy? Uh, yeah, they do. Ah, so because, even if you use them. Yeah, because the Lydic cell is the, the bit that makes the, 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 the Lydic cell. Lie dick cell. Is that what you said? No, lie dig. D I G. So, so, <laughs> so, how do you, so how do you stop them from atrophying? Well, you can't. It's age. It's There's age. nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Steve, I don't like that. I know. Oh, I know. They, it just happens, and and so uh, eventually they just. I mean, you know, it's like women. What can you do about their ovulation? At around fifty-one, they run out of eggs. What can you say? They just run out of eggs. Right. You know, they can have lots of kids, which delays it a year or two, but. Um, they just eventually run out of eggs. We get old. And and that's fine uh, if you know what to look for and to replace testosterone or to herbally boost it and keep your levels quite healthy. But So if your lytic cells go down, yeah. right, that, what does that have on the body? What does that do? Testosterone levels drop. So you can... So when you get really old and if, if your levels of testosterone are really crap, just go see your doctor. Yep. Get a test. Will... will if your lytic cells... So, cells go down, can you still use things like zinc and tribulus and other herbs to improve it? Absolutely you can. Okay. It improves it to a point. And so you, you'll get back to a level that's it's, it's good and you, you postpone the medical intervention as long as you can. Yeah. So that's good. That's, that's okay. natural medicine. And eventually though, look, you know, let, let's fast forward to your 80. Mm-hmm. You're going to have low. And when I say low, a lot of doctors say, oh, but at your age, that's the normal level. And normal's not good. Because normally at eighty you've got arthritis and other crap going on. Well, you know, Steve, 
I come from a, a long line of longevity living males. Yep. My dad was 52 when he had me, and he passed away at 87 because he'd worked with plastics his whole life, oh, right? Yeah. Now, he was still playing tennis up until a few months before he passed away. Mm. And, like, he was 87, but most mm. people thought that he was in his um, 70s, right. like in his early 70s. Okay. So he, he looked great, yeah. even though he had bloody cancer, right? He had this mm. leuke- form of leukemia. Um, my other uncle has just turned 97, and my wow. my my his, so his his brother is ninety seven and his sister is one hundred and one now right still wow. still going well, um so that's all through our mm. generations. What's interesting is that um his great uncle, in his eighties, used to have a bell, and yeah. he'd be upstairs and he and the his wife would put down the tray and go upstairs and service him right. So oh that's what the bell's for yeah not the, to serve a cup of no, tea no, but no, other services tea, so. okay and, but, and it was legendary in our family right? which is why I mention it. So mate the the grasshopper and it's funny because there's a passage in the Bible that talks about the grasshopper withering or something like that. Oh I don't remember. Like, that yeah one. yeah yeah it's funny oh. but but his grasshopper didn't wither right. No. So I mean like that's still going pretty good and and I mean I think um, a lot of guys it's attached to. It's a very fundamental mm. side of things. I mean, mm. and again, I guess this we want to prolong that as long as possible. You know of course. I mean? so. Of course we do. And, and and you know, if, if you're in your 80s and you're doing that, that's terrific. Most of us, you know, mere mortals aren't. We, we, we lose testosterone. And it also comes down to at what level do you want to intervene? Like if you're older and you're going, yeah, I don't have sex as much, whatever, Married to my wife for forty years doesn't really matter. That's then, then that's healthy, but but you've got to. Well, you don't want to break a hip. I mean, no. Yeah, we're not no. talking about sexual gymnastics or anything no. for an eighty year old. <laughs> <laughs> Swing yes. from the bed. That'd be awesome, wouldn't well, it? Wouldn't it be great? Oh, look. Anyway, so so it comes down to quality of life too, and that's what these papers talk about and mood and quality of life. So if you're starting to get the grumpy old man syndrome, yeah. You're getting a bit of a mid middle age spread around yeah, here. Yeah. You're getting you're not as sexually active as you were. That's when you can intervene and improve the quality of your life yeah. with herbs or, or testosterone replacement. Oh. And and the beautiful thing is we we now know that it's safe in deficiency syndromes. We'll, we'll talk about the the 60, 600 milligrams a week, but it's safe and it helps your body. There's lots of graphs here showing that it it boosts vascular heart. Uh, it keeps your blood levels good. So it's very healthy to do that. Mm. And intervening is not like it used to be in the olden days where it's, you know, oh, oh, I've got this problem, doctor, I'm a boy. And, you know, you can go to the doctor now and openly discuss this thing. And you can start off with a cream or you can get an injection, see how it goes, mm. and you can go off it. And mem- remember, remember, because testosterone has such a wide range, men can tolerate quite a, li- a large fluctuation in testosterone. So mm. if you take a lot of it, like, you were doing, and I've done it too. You, you, it doesn't affect you as adversely as it does a woman, because um, women. No, that's women. very, very different. And and look, everybody is different as well too. Predispositions. Mm. I mean, some of the the things you know is is, is hair loss. Yep. Um, I actually use the thing called Stanozol, which is a DHT derived steroid, and my hair just started falling out. And oh, yeah, falls better, that's a very, very potent bad. antigen too. But but using things like um, uh, sus, you know, sustenon, sustenon. And that, no, no no problems whatsoever. Reandron's the other one. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, what I was going to say though is that um, true or true or false? Okay. Here's, here's a myth for you. I wonder if yes. you can miss it for me. Let's see if I can answer it. If you don't have sex for a prolonged period of time, yeah, your old fella shrinks. No, I don't think the penis shrinks. I've heard that it can actually atrophy and actually shrink a oh. small amount. Oh, maybe a small amount because when you're having sex, you're stretching your penis and stretching things. You know, but I don't know if it'll shrink too much. Mm. You might get a you, you might get mild priapism if you What's um, that? oh in inside a penis <laughs> there's small blood vessels too that feed the outside of it, and if they get blocked up, you get like dints in your penis when you get it erect because the blood flow doesn't flow to that area. Oof. Yeah, I know. Uh, and it bends. Can, 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 a, a priapism is a prolonged erection, but but Peyronie's disease. Yeah. <laughs> To see. Yeah, but you can get these dints and bending of your penis and that sort of thing. So if you don't get erections enough. Now, normally you get erections at night. You should. Yeah. And when you wake up in the morning, the morning glory thing, that yep. should be happening. We'll if, that's it, not, if that's not happening. Yeah, that's a, that's a symptom. I, 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 I would recommend um, some form of intervention, whether yes. it be zinc and natural testosterone boosters yep. and or go and see your doctor. Absolutely. Um, have a chat to them. But you can see your doctor and get a blood test anyway for your testosterone. and. Yeah. And and now we know that if you're low, it's safe. 
I mean, we haven't discussed if it's normal and you take lots of it, but yeah. that, that's got some issues to it. Sure, but, sure. But low, it's safe and beneficial. Yeah. It's not just, it's not just like, and, and it's really weird because unfortunately medicine says, oh, you're a woman. Oh, here's HRT and they'll dole it out. You're low in estrogen. Here's some HRT. You're low in insulin. You've got type 1 diabetes. Here's that hormone. You've got low thyroid. Here's that hormone. You're low in testosterone. Oh, we can't do anything with that. It's well, a crazy attitude. Well, the word I think that, that, you know, sort of is in the lexicon, but I really use is andropause. Andropause, so, yeah. So, and it's a real thing. It's it, a real it's, thing. It, again, it's the same. It's, you know, so look, I think at the end of the day, people want to feel better. Yep. They want to look after their health. I mean, yep. it's a tick, 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 right? Absolutely. And, and again, we're always saying nature knows best, use yep. your natural things. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, medical intervention, if there's certain issues, just be, you know, aware of the, the negatives. If you don't go too hard with it, then the research points towards, Steve, that it's more beneficial than not. Vastly more beneficial um, because you're just correcting a deficiency. If I was deficient in water and I drank water, that'll help me. Mm. I, I don't understand why there's stigma around testosterone except for that 1941 paper. Well, let's talk about roid rage. Yeah. Is it real? All right. Well, well what they, I've got my opinions. Yes. But they could be based in mythology. Well, we can test this because in 1996, they did a quite a remarkable paper where they took four groups of young men, yeah. 19 to 40. So that's a healthy testosterone range. I like how we can call... A four-year-old, a young man, Steve. Yeah, well, I can. Well, I can too. Quite easily. Yeah. <laughs> Very easily. I'd so like they, to be a young man again. <laughs> so so they had these four groups. One group, they got a placebo without exercise. Uh -huh. The group two, they got testosterone um, ethanoate, which is the, the – and 600 milligrams, by the way. Yeah, that's a fair whack. Per week, yeah. Per, per week. Per yeah. week. That's, so that's, that's a fair whack, all right. That's without right. exercise, they yeah. gave – a group three, a placebo with exercise, and group four, they gave the testosterone plus the exercise. And what the outcome uh -huh. was to see if they had any what they termed anger issues or anger behavioral issues how, or how, feelings of anger. How big was the study? How many people in each group? Um, they had uh, 41, I think, in each group. 41 in each group. Okay, yeah. that's not bad. That's not bad. So, you know, it's a smallish trial, but look, sure. 41 people. Yeah. Now, the, I'll, I'll skip to the conclusion because okay. they, they gave them this is over 10 weeks. Yeah, yeah. The conclusion, it said, conclusion, super physiological dose of testosterone, which this is, this is wappingly high dose of testosterone, when administered to normal men in a controlled setting, do not increase angry behavior. Mm -hmm. That was the study. Whether they exercised or not, it did not increase anger behavior. A friend of mine, actually, Dale, um, I won't mention his last name. We, we used to talk about this a long time ago yeah. because before I started supplementing, yeah. I said, you know, Dale, what about, um, you know, road rage and, you mm. know, roid rage and all that? And he just laughed and he said, look, at the end of the day, he goes, if you're a dickhead yeah. and you take and you take gear, you just might be a bigger dickhead. Exactly. Um, and, and, and look, I'm relatively easygoing most of the time. Yeah. Um, and it didn't affect me. No. That way, I mean, it really ramped up the libido. Oh, my gosh, seriously. Oh, it was yes, like, it does. forget about it. But having said that, um, mm. the thing that made me more pissed off than anything. What was that? Well, and again, you know, I, this is when I was young. This is many yeah. years ago, but I was using clenbuterol. Oh, yeah. And you can get it for humans mm -hmm. and you can get, oh, I feel like Joe Rogan, you can get it for horses. <laughs> um, that's a horse. You're eating horse oh, food. Horse um, but it's a bronchial dilator. Yeah. But man, I was just pissed off and angry. All, that's what made me angry. And that's got no testosterone in it. And I mean, you're going to love this title of this next paper. It's yeah. called Moose Symptoms in Steroid Use. The Did the you say Moose? <laughs> oh, moose symptoms. Mood symptoms oh. in steroid users. <laughs> moose symptoms. He's hung like a moose. He's been on gear, you can tell. Yeah, you see his junk. He's all moosified. <laughs> he's, he's not on gear, he's on deer. Um, <laughs> oh, nice one. And he's really horny, though. So oh, oh, really really horny. God, God these boom. jokes. Yeah, these okay. are going to be in there. Yeah, okay. All right. So, so, but, 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 so they looked at these people with, with their own steroids, and they found that there was some sort of issues with them. And the title of this paper says it all. It gives it away. Mm. And this was published 2016 uh, in the Journal of Substance Use. It said, mood, mood, symptoms in steroid users, the unexamined role of concurrent stimulant use. Okay. So in a controlled environment, giving testosterone its own did no anger, but these people did suffer more anger because right. they had all the other stimulants. Right, right. They had other stimulants in, in with their steroids. So you've got to remember the average gym goer, you know, as it doesn't just take like let's say serious bodybuilder, the the the, the serious of the yeah, serious. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, top top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. They don't just take testosterone. Oh lord, no. They take 
loads of other things, yeah, yeah. stimulants, yep. it, caffeine, theobromine, yep. ephedrine. Estrogen blockers, yep. um, you know, stimulants, synephrine. Uh, um, yep. You mentioned, uh, well, you mentioned com- combuterol. Yeah. Like, you know, you've, you've got Combuterol. all sorts of things that they're doing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sure. So they had a problem with their moods once they took all but, those stimulants. But who's to say that it actually came from the testosterone? Well, it, as I said, yeah. uh, using clenbuterol, uh, I used it on its own without testosterone and I was pissed off. Yeah. So you could say, well, it was the, the, the extra testosterone. It wasn't. It was the clenbuterol. I was angry all yeah. the time. It Tony was. couldn't come near me. And, was, and and that's what this paper's saying. Now, now we're talking about today testosterone, and we have to exclude, well, the papers exclude testosterone, and they say it's the concurrent stimul- stimulant use, and that's the one where you get the problem. Do you know what makes me really angry? What's that? The news, Steve, the mainstream oh, media. The that's what making, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Politicians also make me pretty angry. Yeah, yeah no, I'm just they kidding. do. So if we're going to get rid of things that cause an- anger, can we get rid of them? Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yeah, wouldn't wouldn't it? It? Now, now, unfortunately, we have to talk about too. If if, if we, with moods, also there are health consequences of abusing. Like, yeah, it doesn't sure. affect your moods, but but Absolutely. we do know that there is an increased risk of dying if they're three times higher are bunk steroid users if they go over the top. What is over the top? All right, the problem, because as I said, okay, yeah. So when I was young and dumb mm. and didn't know anything, yeah. Um, 600 milligrams a week, and mm. I did that for several years. I mean, on and off cycling, mm-hmm. what they call it, all the rest of it. Um, and that was considered to be, in the circle that I was moving in at the mm. time, relatively moderate. Yeah. Like a lot of guys were using up to 1,000. Some some guys, and even, you know, most of them would be like, you're crazy, were sort of using, you know, 14, 15, 16, you know, yeah, that's you know nearly double what I was taking. Oh yeah, but those guys would just thought the whole more is better thing. Of course, where I was looking at what's the maximum that I can get with without the, the negative side effects, and that seemed to work for me six hundred milligrams a week. And oh, I know that that is yeah. probably extremely high, Steve. It is high in, in, in consideration, obviously, with the research that you've done. Yeah, yeah, but but the, it, it is high. But and when it says that it increases death by three times, what are your chances of just the average? Say forty. Tell you were forty at the time. Yeah. Uh, the average forty-year-old dying. It's extremely low. Maybe one in a million. You just just dying of something random. You know, you wake up one morning and you die. Very low chance. So let's assume it's one in a million. Uh-huh. Then it increases it to three in a million, which is still extremely low. Right. So yes, you've got an increased risk of dying by three times, but it's still extremely low if you're young. Know, now let's let's add those steroids onto clenbuterols, the thyroxin that they take, the, sure. the, the 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 laxatives, the dehydrating things. You yeah. get massive thick blood because testosterone yeah. increases erythropoietin, yeah, 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 yeah. and that can put the stress. But testosterone, it's on its own, is not the main risk factor. So. For so- did they? Is there any study, Steve? And I don't know mm. what you've got there. Is there a sort of a a an apex point where it starts going downhill? Like in other words, if you start at, at, at taking zero, yeah. you know, zero effect, and then say go up to you know four hundred milligrams of testosterone per week, and mm. then it starts to decline in terms of the risk versus reward ratio. It all depends on your starting point, right? Um, in youthful people, they didn't in that study where they gave them. That was only for ten weeks, but they gave them six hundred a week. There were no adverse effects in their lipids or anything else you could measure. Sure. So at that level, because normally they talk about liver, but yeah. and here's the funny thing as well too, because mm. a lot of people, and this is when I was younger, they didn't want to take the needles, um, but the needles were actually safer than the oral tablets. Oh, because, absolutely. Um, the oral tablets were what they call 17 um, C alkylate. Yeah. So in other words, um, alkylated. So in other words. It would be like a wrench going through your system where the body wouldn't actually break it down. That would put a huge toxic it's, burden on the liver. Yes. And it was the liver enzymes. And it's funny because there are things like, is it, oh, man, so you're testing my memory, Dianabol and yeah. um, ones with the green snakes. I forget what they were oh, called. Geez. Oh, they were horrible, like really potent wow. tablets. Where um, were you getting these from? Anna, Anna, Anna Droll. I forget what they're freaking called. Anyway, you, you could take those and you could – go to the toilet and crap out your liver. I mean, they were bad. Yeah, People's man. eyes were going yellow. I mean, yeah. it got real bad. Um, but those were actually really bad on the liver, oh, whereas the injections themselves yeah. had very, very minimal effects. Much, much safer. Because you've got to remember, if, if you give a um, like an ethanolate or a long-acting one, you just get this oil and it sits inside your butt for about a month and just slowly, well, that's where you get the injection, IM injection usually for testosterone in the bum. That, that, where we <laughs> In your glute. Safe. Oh, you gave me glute. glute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's a bum. You didn't go in your. No, I didn't go. It went in the side of the. You know, when he's talking about oil, and he, I'm thinking, 
Steve, <laughs> is this with or without the arseless chaps? Yeah, that's yeah. It. Easy I don't, don't want to know what you easy know. What? It's a, you know, we're living in 2020, Steve O. You know, <laughs> you do what you want. 2021 now. <laughs> oh, it is too. See, I'm living in the past. My MCA, Steve. Uh, I'm YMCA. living in the 70s, you know. Yeah. As the song goes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, yep. that's it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know if anyone knows. Yeah, oh, Steve, I know. So, so you give this big injection in your glute. Yes. And it sits there and it just releases testosterone over the month. Yes. The, the tablet gets absorbed straight into your liver. Yeah, yeah. And that just smashes your liver up. Short, so most short oral acting, hormones. Yeah. Most yeah. oral hormones are bad. Right. So you're better off using troches. Um, yep. You know, as we said, transdermals, transdermals. are real for yep. oh. science deniers. Oh, oh yeah, it's nice to put science forgot. deniers. I forgot we got that. Guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, and injections. Uh, yeah. Next, they'll be debating injections work, Steve. Ooh, geez, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so that, get... that's a safe way to go. Absolutely, it is. And so, so I mean, if you're going to take testosterone, and but but monitor it. So so let's say you're going to the doctor and and you. Let's say you're abusing it. Well, let's just say for a second you're 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 getting it from the gym. You're not going to stop. The doctor has tried to talk you out of it. You've said no. Get a level check. I don't think they can talk you out of it. What's really interesting at the moment, if you go to the doctor and you're a female and you say you want to become a male, they'll oh, yeah. give you testosterone. There is so as a male, yeah. why can't I go to the doctor and go, I want to become a mega male? Hey. All right. You Here we go. I'm giving ideas well. to lots of middle-aged oh, bodybuilders geez. and guys that want to increase their testosterone oh, levels here. It's no. like, well, no, I don't want 60 milligrams of testosterone a week. I want 600. I want to be like Jeff. Why not? <laughs> they can make that into a shit. Well, not anymore, of course. I mean, no, no. Unfortunately, I'm not the ravaging beast I used to be. I oh, know, I oh, know. And and, hey, and you don't have to agree with me, Steve. Yeah, well, oh, I mean, actually, you're doing all right, Jeff. Oh yeah, you're well, you know, you're, this, you know, I'd fancy you. It's, it's, you know. it's, yeah, you're pretty sexy. I'll tell you, Steve. Stop it. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Steve. Oh, My ego needed that. Well, was, I think they call that fishing for compliments. Fishing for don't compliments, they? Don't they? Yeah. yeah, you didn't say the same thing about me, yeah, but you can mm. stroke my ego anytime, Steve. <laughs> Super. Um, now we have to talk about women too getting testosterone. So, well, um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's it's obviously it's all the it's all the rage. I mean, it, I what was really interesting is that there was a sixty minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, did you see that, Steve? Uh, no. In the what, states, what well, it was actually about buyer's remorse, effectively, about a lot of women that had done the gender transition. Yep. And a, and apparently it's taboo to talk about it. I mean, is it? it's not. I mean, you can have buyer's remorse over anything, you know. Of course. One of the interesting things with regards to testosterone is mm. that, especially in women, is that the effects largely are irreversible. They are specifically with regards to the the clitoris. Yep. Uh, voice. Yep. Um, there are structural changes as well too. Uh, jaw getting thicker and what have you. Yeah. Um, uh, and look, some people want that. And yep. I'm, okay, you know, as I said, Voltaire, I may disagree with what you have to say yep. or what you want to do, mm -hmm. but as far as it relies on you, yeah. I will defend to the death your right to do it. We'll Absolutely, say it. yeah. And we need that. Now, I vehemently disagree with it, but yeah. I understand. And so, therefore, I think this is part of tolerance. I may disagree or may not like it, but at the end of the day, if you're not hurting anybody else... Mm. You know, we're given free will yes. to practice free will. Yep. Um, or we should be. Yeah. Um, co conscious, choice, whatever you want to say. Informed choice too. And this is the problem. When you stifle debate, yeah. when you discourage discussion, mm -hmm. good and bad, mm -hmm. um, people, what people get then is propaganda yeah. because they don't see the other side of the story. And this is, I think, what the 60 Minutes, which I was actually – I'm not a huge fan of 60 Minutes, but I actually thought nah. there's actually been a few things I've put out recently that I've actually thought have been relatively good, which, you know, mm. me praising mainstream media, I know, right? Yeah. So but, surprised. Um, <laughs> but this one was actually pretty good yeah. because it actually sort of went through some of the people who had done it, not all, but some who were really regretted their decision. And you. the problem is, is that that's too late at that point. It is, it is too late. And, and you, th this is from the International Journal of Drug Policy. So I'm not, I'm going to quote them. And it's exactly what you said. It says, women who use anabolic steroids are at risk of developing irreversible masculinizing effects that are difficult to process and may negatively affect self-esteem, self social life, sexual function, both during and after use. Um, so uh, that's a problem. But there, there are, there is, in this literature, they talk about women who take it on purpose mm -hmm. to transition to a man. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of evidence on that now. Oh, look, it works. And I think this is originally, well, maybe not originally, I think probably originally, I think yeah. there's a lot of, a lot of female bodybuilders that were using it to improve yeah. muscle tissue yes. and just naturally noticed those um, squaring of the jaw, yeah. um, hair growth, yep. um, 
uh, you know, I don't know. This is a bit graphic, but enlarging of the clitoris, clitoris as well yeah. too, which 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 you know makes it a lot bigger, a lot yeah. more visible. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else, Steve? Oh, um, balding is probably one of the worst things. Um, but also, it stuffs up their heart and liver. Yeah, right. Um, they make too many red blood cells, and it's just their, their bodies. See, are not that's separate. actually interesting because it's not just about cosmetic um, effects. You, you mentioned the heart and the liver. Yeah, is it because the female body, the way that um, the female body is designed, is just not created to tolerate that level Correct. of testosterone? You know, we've got ten times more testosterone, and when we're young. Our testosterone levels are through the roof. They're very, very high. So we can tolerate a huge range, but women have this tiny amount of testosterone down here. And, and you know, if they take a male testosterone serve, and they do, then their testosterone, they, they become men. And they've, they've got so many sensitive receptors that just get overloaded more, with more, testosterone. More man-like. You should Absolutely. Say yeah. and, and to transition to a man, they give them physiological levels of male levels of testosterone. Sure. And the effects on them psychologically are horrendous. Yeah. We now know this. Now, I'm not judging, but you just have to be aware that when you're going to take a you say you're a biological woman and you want to transition, the side effects of testosterone therapy in the literature here are, are very poor. You know, it's, it's bad for women. It causes huge mental health problems. Even if they want to transition yep. to it, really? Yeah. I mean, let's say I wanted a, a surgery on myself or something, and it still hurt. Mm. It still has side effects, mm. even if I wanted it. Now, these, um, I'll call them trans men, want to be men, so they're happy to go through the pain. But happy, I don't know if happy is the right word, but that the side effects of those the, the testosterone on them is horrendous. Yeah. It really is. It, it causes not just those physical effects, but huge mental health issues for, for women because too much. It's like giving us too much estrogen. You give a woman a lot of estrogen like they're pregnant and they actually brain improves. You know what I mean? Because they, they're designed for it. Loads of progesterone. You give that to men and it'll screw us up, cause depression and cause us to become impotent and all sorts of things. It's interesting, Steve. It's an area of science, I think, that is so politically charged right mm. now is that people mm. actually don't want to discuss the difference between physiological men and women and the impact that these decisions can actually have on people. We care about people. We're not yeah. here to judge anybody, yeah. to be honest. And as I said, even though we're fundamentally different in our beliefs, Steve, yeah. as well, too, I, I love that saying from Voltaire. And there's a lot of things mm. that Voltaire says that I completely completely disagree with as well too, yes, yes. Uh, which I know what you're, you know that what I'm talking about, yeah. but I think he was incredibly wise, incredibly smart. He had some great sayings as well too, from a humanistic point of yeah. view. He was a complete yeah. atheist as well too. Yeah. Um, Steve, and I, and, I, and I love you. Yeah. You're an atheist. Yes. And I love Voltaire. I love what he stood for. I love what he said. And as I said, you know, this ability to be able to address the difficult issues based on science education, information, and rationale mm. is something that we need to get back to. Because when I do these episodes with you, Steve, and, I, and I'm, I'm conscious that we're presenting truth backed by science mm-hmm. as we interpret it. Yeah. Now that's, that's Our interpretation that's is true. open to other people. To of look course. At. These are all peer-reviewed papers. They are all peer-reviewed papers. And we come to a conclusion based on our logic and, mm-hmm. and based on our bias. Yes. Based on, you know, and we recognize And our experiences. That. That's right. Now, we believe that we're right, and mm-hmm. I think many of the people listening to us would probably argue that most of the time that they would agree with us as well too. But one of the catchphrases of the show is question everything, including Absolutely. what we say, even of though course. it's a joke. But, Steve, we need to – and I just say that in case people feel offended or even listening to it going, hang on, you can't say that. No, we can and we should because there's no hate, there's no discrimination. No. It's actually about presenting information that is true yes, and, and presenting in a way that people can then make up their own minds. Steve, I love it. I I appreciate for people who think this episode is a little controversial. Hopefully, we've made sense, but it's it's opportunity for for little papers here. It just covers the desk today because there's just so much literature on this, and it's 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 not. Don't stigmatize this. This is a medical treatment. You're low in testosterone. You can take testosterone. That's shown to be beneficial for most people. It prevents Alzheimer's too. Did you know that too? Yeah. Low testosterone. No, I didn't. Actually. Yeah, low, low testosterone um, is a major risk factor for Alzheimer's. So, I mean, you know, that's a huge disease. And, you know, just reading the title of this paper, um, it says low testosterone levels and risk of Alzheimer's disease in a meta-analysis in elderly men. And it basically said that if you've got low testosterone, that is a risk factor for Alzheimer's because mm-hmm. it's so good for your brain. Yep. Uh, forget your muscles and your penis for a sec. It's good for your brain. Mm. You know, so, I mean, there's so much literature on this and that's a a strong meta-analysis. So you you can't really, 
I mean, you can't debate it. If you're low in something, I mean, what if you're low in thyroid, you know, or low in insulin because you're type 1 diabetic? You mm. give insulin. Mm -hmm. You're low in water, you drink. Mm. You're low in testosterone. Oh, we can't do that. You're a steroid abuser. You know, mm -hmm. you're labeled. Mm -hmm. But Guys, I think we've shared light on this testosterone thing. I think that that's good. We've, we've put the good positives and the negatives across. Yeah, good, good one. Good one. Anyway, um, Steve, we're going to be back with more next week. Hopefully, can't wait. Yeah. You know, thanks so much for listening, everyone, and we'll be back next week with some more. And next week's podcast is going to be a fun one too. What's that on? Well, I know we've got one coming up, which is asking for a friend. Oh. I know it's probably not next week, but it okay. might be the one after. Yeah. That's going to be horrific. Okay. I, I, I can't promote it. It's just it's just absolutely horrific. It, it, you've got to listen to that one. Cringe, cringe. Cringeworthy. I love it. We're going to get in trouble. We're going to get letters. Love, We're going to get emails. It. But they're actual... We get Questions. letters, lots of letters. They're, yeah, they're, do we do we get? Does anyone even send letters anymore? I don't think. Well, I don't think anyone got sends emails anymore. Yeah, yeah you get an email. Yeah. Oh God, it's funny. All right. But, yeah. Well, we'll be back with that. All right. See you then. All right. See you then. Thanks, Steve. Bye.